Hey folks, it's Cindy at Prep Your Stead, and today I am going to seal some jars with the vacuum sealer. I know that a lot of folks are just starting out on prepping or storing food just for family use for the year round. And one of the great ways that we can do that is with a vacuum sealer. You're going to need a few things. Obviously, you're going to need jars, rings, and lids. Uh, you're going to need a little bowl of water with a dish towel or a paper towel. And you're going to need some O2 absorbers. Um, I've already put all the O2 absorbers in. I spaced and thought of it after the fact. Um, so you're just going to have to bear with me on that. Um, yeah, you know, live and learn. I'm not a video making expert by any means. But at least I have some good information for you. Anyhow, I'm going to put you up here on my ladder slash tripod holdy thingy what have you, because I live in a construction zone, as you can see from the background. So it's, you would not believe what I go through just to get all this put together. Um, anyhow, I have a food saver here. Um, I have for the large mouth jars and the small mouth jars, because I actually use both. A lot of people hate the small mouth jars, but you know what? When everybody buys the other stuff out, they're still there. So that's a good reason to go ahead and grab some. And they're perfect for this kind of stuff because they don't have to have things that are going to be hard to get out of the jar later. Now I've put all the names of what they are on top of the lids. Um, so I've got like pizza crust mix. I have not put the dates on yet because I haven't sealed them yet. And I'll put the dates on shortly. Um, but here like I've got the raspberries and you can see I've got the O2 absorber in. This is some pears, O2 absorber. I usually throw the O2 absorber in the middle. Some people put it on the bottom. Some people put it on the top. Personally, I think wherever you want to put it, as long as it's in the jar. So like all my powders and such, I throw it in the middle because everything clumps in the middle and that's where you end up with the hard spot. So I figure since the moisture is going to be poured, pulled into the middle anyhow, I'm just going to throw it in the middle and prevent it from happening. Now, I'm going to warn you, this is a very loud machine. It is not brand new. I've had this thing for about 20 years, and it's still going strong. So, just so you know. Now, I take a paper towel, and I get it damp. And we're actually going to start with a small jar. So, put the little small jar one on there. And what I do is I take the lid off, and I wipe the inside of the ring on the jar, I have the lid, I mean, and then also on the jar. I don't want any dust or anything that inhibits the seal, so I want to get all of that out of there. I just give it a second and then I go ahead and I just push that on over. Now for the noisy part, and it takes a minute, so bear with it. But what this is doing is sucking all of the air out of the jar and it'll actually pull the lid down so that the lid pops like it would if you were using it in a hot water bath. And that one didn't seal, so we try it again. And that happens from time to time. Sometimes they just don't seal. And I usually take and wipe them again because it means there's something on there. Get there. But like I said, I do my videos with all the nuts and bolts so you can see the mistakes as they happen so you can cope with the mistakes as well. And I haven't used this little one in a long time because I haven't sealed a small jar in a while. So let's hope it's still working. Nope, didn't seal. Oh, it did. Shocking. Now, I live in a tiny house. See, see the, it doesn't pop anymore. I live in a tiny house. Normally, you do not store these with the rings on, but I just set them on there. They are not tightened down at all. You can still wiggle them around. 
That way, if something happens and the seal breaks, you'll know because the jar will pop. Um, the little pop, I mean. So you'll know. But I live in a tiny house. I don't have anywhere to store them. So I just basically set them on so they're still very, very loose. And then, same thing with the big jars. Assuming I can actually work the darn thing. Uh, once again, I take my little wet rag. The oxygen absorber in this one is way down in the middle because that's where I like them. And I like that. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing this on the top of the stove, I don't have countertops yet. So whenever I need to do something, this is where I do it. Although I will be installing a kitchen sink this week. So I will take you guys through that. Here we go. This is going to be a little bit longer and just as loud. Now this is the size O2 absorber I use in the big jars. And I actually do have a baggie of these small ones for the small jars. Like I said, it takes a bit longer. Now I have items that I have stored for 20 years that I have opened when they're stored like this and I have used them and they're just fine. Um, before I do all of this, I actually freeze beans and rice for three days before I put them in the jars. I'd like to kill all the larvae that can possibly be in them so that way I don't store bugs that are going to pop to life and eat things. And again, I put the ring on, just loose, so that it's not actually touching, because I want to know when it pops up, if it does pop up. I use the big ones in the big jars, I use the little ones in the little jars. These were actually freeze-dried. One thing that I've noticed when I buy packaging of freeze-dried fruits and such, the pouches wear out before the food expires. So I transfer them to the jars when the packages start to get worn. So if you have uh, freeze-dried fru food, uh, especially fruits, you may want to go into your storeroom and check the bags. Because if you move or if the kids go in and rearrange things or whatever, um, the packages themselves age poorly. And the packages actually wear out well before the food inside of them goes bad. So you're going to want to repackage them into jars so that you can then use the food later because, I don't know, I don't use that much stuff that quickly. Uh, but also it's nice to have it stored. Um, I have pears. I have bananas. Um, I have mixes that I do as well. Um, this is a biscuit mix that I like. See the edge of the little oxygen absorber there. And then this is actually a pizza crust mix. And because I never remember the recipes five years down the road, I actually photocopy and cut out the recipe and put the recipe into the jar so that I can remember what I need to do to reconstitute that food. Um, what's the point of having it if you can't use it because you can't remember how it gets used? 
So make sure that if you've got recipes or anything like that that are specific to that. Um, I even have some that are on little laminated cards because I use it so frequently that I move it to the next jar when I repackage more. Um, but otherwise, you know, you've got beans and all kinds of things that you can store this way. The jars, I haven't had a problem with beans or rice using them 15 or 20 years even later. Um, and in fact, I've got beans in there that are getting close to 25 years old and I still use them. I use the oldest supplies first so I know that what I'm telling you is fact. Um, they're still usable at 25 years. They do take a little bit longer to soak, so make sure that you're ready to soak them a little bit longer. But other than that, this is an excellent way for long-term storage to keep your food from going bad. Um, yes, it's a pain in the butt to move. Um, I've moved three times with these jars, or the ones in the pantry actually. You have to wrap them and make sure that they move safely and then check all your lids after you move. That means if you've got rings on them, take all the rings off, check each and every single jar. If any of them have popped, replace the oxygen absorber and reseal the jar. That's vital that if you do have jars that pop, replace the oxygen absorber and then reseal the jar because you wanna make sure that you don't have anything that's stale in there that will not be fresh when you go to open it later. So make sure that you do that. Um, otherwise, you've got good shelf stable food and that's all I've got for you today so I will see y'all next time uh, hit a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you'd like leave a comment if you'd like and I will see you next time when I'm installing a kitchen sink in the house later this week I'll talk to y'all later bye